This is the Burning Pre-Sales Podcast. Today's question will be answered by Mark Green, who is a technology evangelist at Sage and co-host of the enormously successful podcast, Two Pre-Sales in a Pod. All right, Mark, um, the Sage from Sage. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't uh, do things impromptu. When I was when I was in the sales space selling sales technology, um, we we talked often and frequently about uh, automation and taking away those repetitive parts of a uh, of a job that are important but don't require human hands. And there there's some pushback to that. Um, I think naturally in sales, uh, but it seems like maybe there's more pushback in pre-sales. I don't know why that is, but anyways, the the broader theme here is automation. Is it going to replace pre-sales talent specifically and sales talent more broadly? Uh, what's what's the reality? Uh, if if you don't mind commenting on that, that'd be oh, kind of it's definitely going to replace some pre-sales talent. Suddenly, all the listeners are like, <gasps> "He said it." <laughs> Like we're all thinking it, but he's actually gone and said it. But <laughs> so I will, so I will add a little, um, a little bit of comfort around the fact that it sounds like I'm bringing doom and gloom. In fact, it's quite the opposite, and I've got quite a passion for the purpose of why would why on earth we bother do, doing this work? I know that we like working, we like we love this industry, we do it every day almost, but. Um, if we didn't have to, I'm not quite sure that we all would. And the way that technology is bringing just the speed of adoption. Deloitte said recently that the needs of businesses are growing. The pace of innovation is accelerating. And we can either plan for change or plan to retire. Mm-hmm. And I think automation is wonderful. I... Um, I think it it loves the jobs we hate, to steal a phrase. Um, I would very, very happily have automation replace some of the things that I do day in, day out, if it if it is replaced in such a way that benefits the people that I was doing that for in the first place. So think about consensus, overview demos of technology. If it's exactly the same, information that's being transferred get that across in all sorts of means whether it's a document or a video or a or a demo board that's great because the person receiving it will know that that's enabled me to give them more specific time Mm -hmm. to understand their challenges and talk to them and work through their their project um but automating people's jobs away no what i'd what i'd like to touch on is is something that um Andrew Barnes came up with the the four day week. I think people misunderstand it. A lot of people think, oh, I could do a four day week, but I'd still want to get paid the same because stuff costs the same. Well, sure. But imagine if everyone did a four day week because one day's worth had been automated away and we get paid for, for those four days. But then we have three days of a weekend and everybody would, would be the same. And we'd end up having more time with our families and more time to do what we would like to do. COVID has given us the opportunity to be at home far more um, and spending time with families. And a lot of people are realizing, why do I spend five hours a day commuting when I could be there to tuck my kids up right. in, in bed? Or why do I have to leave before it's light in the morning? So if we can automate the bits that cause us to have to do that and leave the bits that where where we can add massive value, I think that's a fantastic thing. And some people will be on board with that and they, they are able to automate their jobs. And the people that don't recognize that the world has already moved on to this that stuff is being automated, um, won't be able to take advantage of that. And so we'll find them stuck in a place that's a bit difficult. I'm, I'm curious. I know we're getting into the realm of speculation, so maybe some people lose some interest here because this is obviously less predictable. But there are 
early signals, you'd mentioned demos, for example, that's certainly close to home and in, in our business. Um, and, and there's a heavy element of, of automation, especially on those Harbor tour type demos, but are there other aspects of the sales engineering role that you could, you could foresee maybe drifting off into that realm of automation or that necessarily have to have to be automated so that you can spend more time in consultative like discussions. I, I'm assuming you're already starting to see this right now, correct? True. Well, I think people are adopting a digital hybrid view, uh, view of not just pre-sales, but the whole buyer interaction journey. Mm-hmm. And so there are, there are times when a buyer n- knows that they need to get the information and they want to have it done at a certain point because they're working through their list of how they want their project to run. And so for us to have to understand exactly how their project is running and whether or not they had the opportunity to do a piece of work yesterday, so now today they're doing the bit that we're expecting, it's very, very difficult to make sure that you're tuned into that exactly. So by providing the information at the right time, just when, when the person needs it, in a way that they mm-hmm. consume what they need, when they need, or consume it twice because they forgot. Or they were going to do that bit, and then they had a phone call, and so they've moved it out to next week. Yeah. All of these just normal ways of working, we suddenly have a way to, to help them, whereas previously we didn't because we had to get a person on the phone talking them through an hour's worth of demo that the person had to then consume and make sure that they asked all the right questions and recorded all of the bits. And is the meeting going to be recorded? Possibly not. So you're going to, they're going to have to remember it because their job's on the line if this project doesn't work. You know, if, yeah. the, if the project fails, they're the people that will be looked at. And, and suddenly that seems very dramatic. But all we're <laughs> doing is, is using the power of pre-sales to be impactful in lots of other places in just smart ways. Yeah. And it's thoroughly exciting. As you can tell, I'm so passionate about it because pre sales is 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 my thing. I, I, I am pre-sales, but I'm not pre-sales just for the sake of throwing demos at, at people. Um, it has to be useful. And so understanding the buyer is um just a wonderful way to, way to go. It's at the it. heart of it. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. 